welcome back to this series you guys we're going to talk about getting proper testing in an FIIE or an FIE a full individualized initial evaluation or full initial evaluation under IDEA for special education and related services if you haven't met I'm Karen Mayer Cunningham special education boss founder of special education academy training everyone that sits at the 504 IEP table navigate and negotiate successful student outcomes so we're talking about number three today. We're talking about medical physical. It's a part of the evaluation that sometimes skipped over because it's not something that we standardize. It's not uh, like there's a certain assessment that we do in these areas. And this is a response back from the parent guardian or the surrogate parent. So it's very important if you are a school-based member, you're an attorney or you're an advocate representing the family um, or the family, is that we make sure that we reach out to the family to get all of that information. The family is going to possess that information. So Medical, physical, what does that mean? I think generally we would talk about at schools, what do we do for kiddos in elementary school? We give them a vision and hearing screening, and that's great. Um, but those are not exactly perfect, right? He could have, be having a good day. He could be having a bad day. Um, it's very important that annually, whether or not you're having your child tested for special education or related services or seeking to uh, um, pursue a 504 plan, that you make sure that you have that information back from your school, that you get that information updated from your pediatrician. And if the fact that pediatrician refers you to a specialist that you go and pursue those outcomes. What we're looking at is we're looking at any condition that adversely affects the child's education. Any condition that adversely affects a child's education. And that's outside of reading, math, and writing, okay? But what could be under medical, physical? So certainly we're gonna make sure that their vision is in the normed and average range expected for their age. Their hearing is in the normed and average range as expected. We have onset conditions for children that go undetected because they use their other skills to compensate, right? They, they follow the other children in the world, the room. They follow the other children um, based on the teacher's expectations. So make sure that we're looking at these and we're getting these um, addressed. So here are some um, conditions that also might present. If your child has all of a sudden started bruising for no reason, or um, if there is a, a chair to walk into or a wall to bump into, we might say, oh, they've, they've gotten clumsy. Um, their balance is, is um, not what it used to be. You definitely want to make sure that you pursue that with a, a medical professional to make sure that there's not something else going on with your student. And um, what are some common medical conditions that we see in school that would affect a child's, uh, adversely affects a child's educational performance and rise to the level of needing a 504 plan or an IEP, an individualized education plan? Asthma. Asthma is a very common condition in young people. We want to make sure that um, we know about that when we're setting up the plan. A lot of times parents don't share information if it doesn't impact what happens at school. What do I mean by that? Let's say that we only need her, her asthma medicine at home, or it's very rare, or it's only when she goes on vacation or into a different setting, the woods or the mountains or the beach. You still need to sell the committee, the multidisciplinary team, so that they know those conditions and that we have that in her history. Um, you want to look at any condition that also is dispensed medicine at home or medicine at school. We want to look at any condition that rises to the level of the student needing outside counseling that might rise to the level of having some medicine prescribed by those professionals providing that therapy or that intervention. And so if there is asthma, we want to know what kind of protocol do we use? Do we use an EpiPen at school? What do we do in a case of emergency? And that you have a plan set in place. In this area, we would talk about developing an IHP. An IHP is an individualized health care plan that sets inside of the student's record, whether they're a general ed student, a 504 student, or a student with an individualized education program. Um, allergies. We have children that have very severe uh, life impacting and sometimes life threatening allergies, um, whether they're peanut allergies, um, allergies to certain fabrics, allergies to certain chemicals. Um, and so you wanna make sure that you've asked the parent those questions. Diabetes is a very, common uh, condition for juveniles and we want to make sure that if that in fact is a diagnosis they have that we understand the protocols that are dispensed at home that we understand if they are diabetic that we need to be checking their levels we need to be making sure that they have dosed whether that's medicine or that they've been provided the appropriate food or drink we need to know if there is um, orders from 
a physician that impacts their diabetes. And we need to have all of that on file. Epilepsy. Epilepsy is a condition in children. Obviously, that's going to impact you at school. Is that um, monitored or you know taken into? Is it um, correctly addressed through a medical protocol? Um, what do you do? Is it is it medicine that he takes daily for his epilepsy? And it, again, is there there is there emergency medicine that needs to be at the school um, in case there, he's episodic? Um, mental health. If your student is receiving mental health services somewhere. And along with those mental health services, they've been prescribed um, a medical protocol. We want to make sure that we provide that information to the campus. It doesn't matter if that medicine is not dispensed during the instructional day. We need to know, should a child become impaired or unable to communicate? Um, and then if there's other medical people that become involved, what that student has ingested during the day so that if there is an EMT or something like that, that we are not overdosing them for something to provide them emergency care. Tourette's syndrome um, is a medical condition that is not uncommon in young people. And it's often onset. We um, would first say for a year with a medical professional, they might have a, a tick disorder. And then after a year, depending on the acuity of it, it could turn into Tourette's syndrome. And these are all conditions that we serve under 504 or an IEP. Um, or an individualized healthcare plan. ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity, attention deficit inattentive, or attention deficit combined, right? So uh, again, is there a medical protocol that's taken at home? Is there additional medicine that's dispensed during the day? Does that medicine impact their ability to eat? Does that make them lethargic? Does that make them not hungry? Is it going to impact whether or not they have their snack or lunch? These are all things that we need to know during the instructional day. Um, other conditions would be um, a heart condition, hemophilia, lead poisoning, leukemia, nephritis, rheumatic fever, sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis. Um, any, any condition, there are countless medical conditions. It's vehemently important that you share that with these school-based members because those things impact the student's educational performance. And even if it's just the student takes a medicine for a certain medical condition, then they might need to be hydrated more. They might need to have uh, food more often. So it's very important that what's going on in the child's life that we know about that's medical and physical so that we can intervene. We also need to know if that is going on so that when the other multidisciplinary team members who are going to be testing in speech and language, cognitive, achievement, adaptive behavior, psychological, emotional, behavioral, they know that there might be certain times of day that you're going to get a better result. Maybe their medicine um, that really helps them is wearing off at one o'clock. Maybe um, they're really hungry at this time. Maybe at a certain time of the day, their sugar levels go high because of their diabetes. So all of that information is unbelievably important. We want to share it with the, med uh, the medical team, uh, with the multidisciplinary team, so that we all know what's going on annually with the student. Additionally, if any of those medicines, um, the prescriptions, the dosage, the times that they're dispensed has changed, make sure that you're always providing that to the school-based member so we have an accurate record in their cumulative folder. Thanks, and we'll see you guys in the next video.